Hey, are you confused about the city's new COVID-19 restrictions? We'll do our best to explain coming up on this Friday, August 21st edition of This Is Now. There are a lot of things you cannot do in, in the privacy of your home. And perhaps one of them is have gatherings that endanger people's lives. Meanwhile, the governor's latest emergency order opens the door for so-called resort bubbles. It shows great promise. And some leaders think this is the way to get tourism restarted. And we're going to have to be creative. If I'm your president on day one, we'll implement the national strategy I've been laying out since March. Joe Biden officially accepts his party's presidential nomination. I'm both the imam on Capitol Hill with the promises made on the pandemic and the Trump administration's response. These stories and new developments in the case against Chad Daybell. That's coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon on this Aloha Friday. I'm Jonathan, your director producer of This Is Now. Alongside Ashley here, we begin with breaking news from the State Department of Health. Hey everyone, health officials say another patient with COVID-19 has died, bringing Hawaii's death toll to 46. DOH is also reporting 230 new COVID-19 cases today. The breakdown by county shows 209 are on Oahu, 13 are on the Big Island, six are on Maui, and Kauai has two. Meanwhile, as we I told you yesterday the latest order against social gatherings on Oahu has caused some confusion and there's also the issue of whether the new rules can be enforced. Here's Ben Gutierrez with the details. Mayor Caldwell's order says there are places where people are not allowed to gather and that has created some confusion over places where some people may be allowed to get together. No gathering is the catchphrase of the order, which prohibits social gatherings in a single room or space. It does allow groups of no more than five to dine in restaurants. But what does it mean for churches? What does it mean by party? Does that, to, some, to the people in our Bible study, it meant social. To the clergy, it meant a gathering. Pastor Yukio Hamada wasn't sure if it meant that he could have no more than five people in his church, which already has been configured for social distancing. I emailed the COVID hotline right after the proclamation came out, and I still haven't received an answer from them. He finally got some clarification from other officials in the Lutheran Church. Churches holding spiritual services are considered designated businesses, not social gatherings. The mayor said he was banning singing and wind instruments in church, but the actual order says they're okay if they're far apart. For restaurants, the confusion is over whether people can dine in. Helena's Hawaiian Foods has cut down from more than 20 tables to just nine to maintain social distancing between diners. Business said the longtime local restaurant has flipped from 80% dine-in to 80% takeout, but the owner has already prepared to keep dining groups to five or fewer. We've had to break up some parties, you know, and just put them on separate tables, but we've been able to accommodate everybody, and um, it hasn't been that bad. But some restaurant operators are worried that the phrase, no gathering, means no going out for some people. I would have to attribute it to the stay-at-home order that people are just a little bit confused at the moment. There was also an interpretation that the order meant you couldn't have more than five people in a household. Obviously, it's a little unrealistic as many people, especially here, live in households that are larger than five people. And so you wouldn't be able <laughs> to still, you know, say grandma's got to go. Or what it does mean is that you can't have anyone come to your home for a social gathering. The government has a right to regulate what you do in your home if the reason is compelling enough, says a law professor. We can't do anything we like. You can't murder somebody in your home. Right? There are a lot of things you cannot do in, in the privacy of your home. And perhaps one of them is have gatherings that endanger people's lives. The counties have established hotlines where people can report COVID order violations, but enforcement will still be an issue. I don't think we're going to have people knocking on doors saying how many people are eating dinner with you right now. And, you know, it's, it's just not feasible. Ben Gutierrez, Hawaii News Now.
Now, Hawaii County's mayor is requesting more restrictions as well. Harry Kim submitted emergency rule number 11 to the governor's office for approval. It would limit indoor and outdoor group sizes to 10 people or less. Sports practices would be downsized from 35 to 25 people. Competitive play would be cut in half from 100 people to 50. Governor Ige's new emergency order extends the inter-island travel quarantine through September 30th. It also opens the door for something known as a resort bubble. It's the plan leaders have worked up to restart tourism. Chelsea Davis has more on that. Now, this does not eliminate the 14-day mandatory travel quarantine. Tourists would come and do their quarantine at a participating resort. The governor says it allows visitors to enjoy hotel amenities while minimizing the chance of infection. This applies to both Trans-Pacific travelers as well as inter-island travelers. Resorts are allowed to opt in after showing they can police their own guests and keep employees safe. Kauai Mayor Derek Kawakami says this is something that he is open to. Resorts would have to show a burden of proof that they have the ability and process and systems in place to keep their associates healthy and safe, as well as their guests. And of course, most importantly, uh, our people that live here day in and day out. Mayor Kawakami says participants would have to wear bands that track their movements, ensuring they are staying within the resort's boundaries. He says this is a work in progress. He just wanted to be transparent. Now, Maui County Mayor Mike Victorino said he also supports the idea of resort bubbles, but he says they are still not ready to effectively open up. Chelsea Davis, Hawaii News Now. A plan to bring scores of reality TV production crew and cast members to Maui next month has been postponed. Mayor Michael Victorino says Temptation Island has been delayed due to a surge in COVID-19 cases. Victorino says 100 workers and casts were planning to stay and film at the Andas Maui at Wailea Resort. No word on when production could resume. Unemployment is down on five of six islands, but not down enough. Howard Dykus reports. Within the 13.1% jobless rate are many stories. Maui is worst off 22% jobless. Kauai, 18.7%. Big Island, almost 13%. Oahu, a little over 11%. Molokai, usually the state's highest jobless rate, fell to 79 about the same as pre-COVID. Lanai'i has the lowest rate, 4.8, but that's four times what it had a year ago. The reality is worse than all those numbers. People who lost their jobs and then found new work are counted as employed, even if their new jobs pay less, are temporary, or are part-time. The jobless tally doesn't count of almost 30,000 people who have simply dropped out of the labor force. July hotel occupancy statewide was 23%, in Waikiki 20%, West Maui 4%. Hotels cut room rates almost in half to fill that many rooms. Revpar, that's revenue per available room, fell more than 80% in the hotels doing best. Revpar on Maui fell 93%. It's the worst hotel story since The Shining. Consolidated Theaters reopens four locations today. Ward, Pearl Ridge, Mililani, and Kamakana Ali'i. Empty seats between all groups and no groups larger than five. A Punahou graduate and a prominent political fundraiser has found herself in the middle of an international scandal. Rick Dasog has this exclusive story. 45-year-old Nikki Lum Davis is a 1993 Punahou graduate and entrepreneur. She's well known in national Republican political circles pictured here in 2008 with Cindy McCain. After a career in entertainment in Los Angeles, she moved back to Hawaii around 2015 and now lives in this $3.5 million Kahala home. And quickly became active again in local um, society um, circles. According to a criminal complaint filed this week, Davis and several mainland political fundraisers are being accused of using their political clout illegally to influence the Trump administration in exchange for $8 million. Davis is charged with aiding an unregistered foreign lobbyist. She's charged with aiding and abetting um, an unregistered lobbyist for a foreign power. It's the same charge, actually, as uh, Paul Manafort was charged and convicted of uh, for failing to register all of his lobbying activities on behalf of foreign interests. Court documents say that, among other activities, she helped arrange this meeting between President Trump and Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak. Razak was recently sentenced to 12 years in prison for his role in the 1MBD scandal 
which involved the theft of $4.5 billion. Davis and other alleged conspirators are suspected of trying to get the Trump administration to quash the investigation. We are committed to 25. Davis's partners were not charged, but the complaint indicates that one of them is former Republican National Committee official Elliot Broidy. He could not be reached. The case will not only be closely watched in Washington, but it also underscores the heightened political tensions between the U.S. and China. The complaint also mentions that the conspirators work for China in its efforts to extradite billionaire and outspoken dissident Guo Wanghui. He remains in the U.S. What they've laid out is, is almost mind-boggling in complexity and going all the way from Washington, D.C. to China. Davis's attorney declined comment. Rick Desog, Hawaii News Now. In Idaho, Chad Daybell pleaded not guilty to all felony charges against him. The 52-year-old didn't speak and showed no emotion during the remote hearing today. Daybell is charged with concealing evidence by destroying or hiding the bodies of his wife, Lori Vallow's two children, 7-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow and 17-year-old Tylee Ryan, at his eastern Idaho home. Investigators found their remains during a search in June. Daybell and Vallow were married on Kauai after the children went missing missing and they were living there until Vala was arrested. She is also charged in the children's deaths. New at noon, actress Lori Loughlin received a two-month federal prison sentence for her role in the high-profile college admissions cheating scandal. Elise Preston reports. A federal judge sentenced actress Lori Loughlin to two months in prison, accepting her guilty plea in the college admission scandal. Appearing by video in a Boston courtroom, Loughlin choked up as she apologized for her crime, saying, I will do everything in my power to redeem myself. She was ordered to pay a $150,000 fine and perform 100 hours of community service. What the prosecution in making this deal was attempting to do with a very tough sentencing judge in Judge Gorton was to say, look, Your Honor, it's time. They finally accepted responsibility. We have to all recognize that they did this. I think both sides were scared that this judge was not going to accept the plea agreement. Hours earlier, Lachlan's husband, fashion designer Massimo Giannulli, was sentenced to five months in prison after telling the judge, I am ready to accept the consequences and move forward with the lessons I've learned from this experience. At the sentencing this morning, Judge Gorton chastised the husband for saying that he had been the leader and he had really caused shame to fall upon his wife. The couple had fought the charges for more than a year before pleading guilty in May, admitting to paying half a million dollars in bribes to get their two daughters into the University of Southern California as crew recruits, even though neither of them were rowers. Lachlan and her husband are among dozens of parents who have pleaded guilty in the case. Actress Felicity Huffman was the first to serve prison time, spending 11 days behind bars last year. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Facing public backlash, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy has told a Senate panel that it's his sacred duty to ensure election mail delivery. But he told senators today that he has no plans to restore curbside mail collection boxes or high-speed sorting machines that have been removed. He said they're not needed. Over the last 10 years, about 30, it averages about 3,500 years, so 35,000 of them have been removed, and it's a, it's a data-driven uh, method. Since my arrival, we removed 700, uh, uh, 700 post, uh, post collection boxes, of which I had no idea uh, that that was a process. I was made aware when everybody else was made aware. It was not a critical issue uh, 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 you know, within, the, within the Postal Service. This has been going on in every election year and every year for that matter. The committee is digging into service changes he made ahead of the November election, just as millions of Americans are expected to vote by mail. Democrats warned DeJoy's cost-cutting initiatives are causing an upheaval that threatens voting. New today, Vice President Mike Pence is dismissing the QAnon conspiracy theory. That's after President Trump made some controversial comments earlier this week. I want to ask, uh, at the White House, the president seemed to embrace QAnon, which is a group that the FBI has warned very likely motivates some domestic extremists to commit criminal, sometimes violent activity. 
This is a group that peddles theories that say that some politicians and high-profile Hollywood celebrities are a member of a satanic cult that are also cannibals. They say that coronavirus is being disseminated by George Soros and Bill Gates with the help of 5G networks. The president says they love America. So how do those beliefs embody a love of America? Well, you said the president seemed to embrace it. I, 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 I didn't hear that. He said they love I, America, I Mr. Vice I President. I don't know they anything. I heard the president talk about he appreciates people that support him very generally. Do you generally, believe they love America? Do you believe they I, love America? I don't know anything about that conspiracy theory, John. How can you not know or, about it, people given that are how much it's been in, in the news? How can you not know about it at this well, point? Well, I, I, honestly, John, I just I, I don't know anything about that. I've heard about it. We we dismiss conspiracy theories around here Will you dismiss out it? of hand. Will you dismiss but, it? Will you dismiss it? I just did, John. No, you we didn't. dismiss conspiracy theorists out of hand. But the, the point is, uh, this president's going to continue to take our case all across this country. We, we, the choice in this election has never been clearer, and the stakes have never been higher. Meanwhile, the Democratic National Convention wrapped up yesterday with Joe Biden accepting his party's presidential nomination. Bafta Yimam has the highlights of Joe Biden's speech and a look at next week's Republican convention. The fireworks over the Wellington skyline signal the end of the Democratic convention. Democrats' 2020 candidate for president, Joe Biden, provided some fireworks of his own as he accepted the party's nomination. Our current president has failed in his most basic duty to the nation. He's failed to protect us. Biden spent a good portion of his 25-minute speech focused on the coronavirus pandemic. The president still does not have a plan. Well, I do. If I'm your president on day one, we'll implement the national strategy I've been laying out since March. And he promised to be a president for the whole country, not just Democrats. We can choose a different path and together, Take this chance to heal, to reform, to unite, a path of hope and light. This is a life-changing election. Republicans agree this is a critical election. That's why the Trump administration says it's fighting to stop the expansion of mail-in voting. We have to win. I don't like this mail-in ballot deal. They're going to send out 51 million mail-in ballots to people that haven't requested them. Well, where are they going? The theme of next week's Republican National Convention is honoring the great American story, with featured speakers each night. Republicans plan to highlight President Trump's accomplishments during his first four years in office. We were sailing, by the way, without the uh, plague from China. This thing was over. This was over. We were sailing. But that came in, and then you have to prove yourself again. So now I have to prove myself again. President Trump will deliver his speech on the White House's South Lawn Thursday night. Bofta Imam, CBS News, Washington. We'll have the latest from the campaign trail coming up on the NBC Nightly News on KGNO and the CBS Evening News on KGNB. Let's take you outside right now. It's 86 degrees there as we look at Aloha Tower. The time is 12.18. Here's Guy Hockey with a look at that oh-so-important weekend forecast. How's it on this Aloha Friday? We're saying bye-bye to this mass of moisture that threatened to bring us a lot of rain. It really didn't. Most of the moisture passed by to the south. We just had a few scattered showers from Maui and the Big Island. And you can still see a lot of rain from that system is firing up out over the ocean. But over land, we're not going to see much rain. Maybe a few windward and Malka showers. We're going to see typical trade wind weather. Now, the trade winds will be running at steady speeds today. From Maui County to Kauai, they'll be running about 10 to 20 today. Over all the, the corner side of the Big Island, those winds will be light. It's going to be hot and sticky over there. Everybody else, textbook trade wind weather. High temperatures running maybe to about 92 degrees here on Oahu. And then uh, it's going to be a little bit sticky over on the corner side of the Big Island. And they'll get some afternoon showers uh, stretching down towards Honau now. Surf's on the way down, but we are expecting a hurricane swell to pick up on the east shore by tonight through tomorrow. Not a big swell, but it's going to keep the activity going. Also, south shore is going to get a couple of boosts over the weekend. And again, below advisory levels, but that should be a whole lot of fun, especially during these pandemic times when you got to get outdoors and enjoy the weather. Now, the weather's going to be gorgeous. Trade winds getting stronger from tomorrow for the next several days after that. We'll have more details on the weather and the news on air and online. Thank you, Guy. It seems like the internet is always talking about pumpkin spice. Of course. You a fan? Yeah. 
uh, it's okay. It's in everything, <laughs> right? Ice cream, cereal, even deodorant. But now oh. we can add hard seltzer. Oh, interesting. To that list. This is a brand vibe. It's not, I don't think it's actually available here in stores, but it's, you can buy this limited edition starting in September in Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Super limited, right? Oh. Yeah, six pack costs 10 bucks. Check out on, I, you can't even get it online because you can't deliver stuff like what that. What a tease. So, yeah, it's going to be hard to find around here, but sounds interesting. All right. Well, a lot of people have had some embarrassing virtual meeting moments. Oh, well, today, a Delaware Democrat had one of his own. Now, it happened during the virtual hearing between the U.S. Postal Service and the Senate. Senator Tom Carper was caught spewing F-bombs as he seemed to be having technical difficulties. Let's listen in. Senator Carper. Oh, I'm cringing already. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Is no. Senator Carper there? We'll move on to uh, Senator Langford. My, oh, <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh no. man. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I think Senator this Carper is aid. there. I think he's okay. trying to be able to okay. right now. Senator Carper, can you unmute? Oh, he better apologize I'm, I'm for that. Unmute. Okay, there we go. We, we don't want to be on TV okay. again. Well, the hearing uh, was aired live and uncensored on C-SPAN. <laughs> oh, no. Can you imagine? Not good. That's always, not cool always check all. your mute button, guys. No. <laughs> Meanwhile, back here in Hawaii, there's a new effort to uh, and around the world to remove plastic and other waste from our oceans. Casey Lund is at the Alawai Harbor checking out the newly installed sea bins. This is amazing. Uh, this is what was collected from that sea bin. It was emptied at 6 p.m. last night, and then we just emptied it this morning at 6 a.m. You can see plastic straws, some styrofoam. Eventually, in the next 12 months, three tons of marine debris will be filtered, 100 million gallons of water uh, through this sea bin right here at the Alawai Harbor. There are two here at the Alawai, but this is really just the beginning of this really amazing project. I want to introduce Ben Wilkinson from the sea bins project. Project. Ben, uh, really have our sights set high when we talk about bringing this here to the Aloha State. Yeah, for sure. We're looking to partner with some local businesses and um, you know government agencies. Um, we've partnered with the DLNR that's given us this uh, sea trial, and yeah, we're looking to put as many um, possible in the in the harbors and marinas around the, all the islands. So if I'm a here. boat owner or a, a small business owner and I want to get involved, uh, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, the best way is to go, to, we have a website, uh, seabinsforhawaii.com uh, and, you know, you know, get involved and, and contact us where we're available to, um, you know, for communicate, for a demonstration and education also. It's really wild to see these things in action. Uh, and I, I want to ask you also, uh, along with the debris, the particulates, the plastics, I read that these are, are also filtering oil. Yes, yes. Um, we have a pad in the, in the bottom of the, the sea bin. And as you know, water that comes from the vessels or spills or anything, it'll filter um, oil particles and fuel uh, also. And then we also want to say thank you to Green Man Hawaii, uh, Instagram handle at Green Man Hawaii, the gentleman that's already been working to clean the Alawai, uh, now partnering with the Seabin Project. Really some great stuff. Again, seabinsforhawaii.com uh, where you can go to learn more. And again, they have that GoFundMe there on their website as well. Reporting at the Alawai Harbor, I'm Casey Lund for This Is Now. It's like a great program mm -hmm. there. Hey guys, you know, it has been a month since we've been coming to you on KHNL. I just wanted to say thank you to those viewers who watch us there every day and to everyone else who checks us out on our digital platforms. It's Friday, everyone. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.